When you think about it, the wheel is truly revolutionary. Yes, that was a bad attempt at humor. It's okay to laugh at me or with me. The wheel is truly revolutionary. Get it? Do I need to bring the bicycle back? It's true. When you picture a wheel in your mind, you're probably thinking about some type of movement. Whether you're thinking of our ancient forebearers using logs to move heavy stones some 15,000 years ago, or thinking about your car tires and realizing that you probably should have them replaced before winter, the idea of circular motion moving us forward was a leap of human imagination. From carts to chariots to bicycles to electric cars, the wheel allowed us to cover greater distances, harvest more crops, move heavier loads, and so much more with greater ease and efficiency. If you were to turn to the person beside them, beside you, and ask them the best, most enduring invention in human history, they would likely say, the wheel. It's such a great invention that it's at the hub, that's the center of a wheel. <laughs> it's such a great invention that it's also one of our most overused cliches. Let's not reinvent the wheel. Reinventing the wheel is what has given human beings an edge, writes Roma Agrawal in her book, Nuts and Bolts, Seven Small Inventions That Changed the World in a Big Way. Turn that basic wheel on its side, she says, and human beings are able to create pottery, not only for beauty, but for storage. Spin that wheel with human, animal, water, or wind power, and you can transform whole grains into flour. Add teeth to that wheel and watch it spin as it powers the mechanical world as we know it. With a bit of careful reinvention, the very same wheel that helped us traverse distance can now help us save time, perform tasks, and create wonders unimaginable to our ancestors. The clean clothes you are wearing, whether straight from the dry cleaners or your washing machine, the wheel made that happen. The clean dishes you ate from last night, hopefully a big meal if you're able to fast, the wheel made that dishwasher work. That watch you're already checking, the wheel made that happen too. Even your Apple Watch or Fitbit wouldn't exist without the wheels and circular motion of oil rigs. Reinventing the wheel is the driving force behind human progress even if it gets a bad rap from an overused cliché. We can see it at the start of this new year in both ourselves and our synagogue. But we know that Yom Kippur isn't entirely about us. For whom will you serve as an agent in the coming year? It is up to us to make progress, to make a difference in each new year. Have you ever wondered why that book you hold in your hands on the holidays is called by a different name than the book we pray from on Shabbat? Sidor, the prayer book for Shabbat, comes from the word order, as we offer our prayers in the same order as our ancestors some 1,500 years ago. But the prayer book for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Sukkot and Passover and Shavuot is called a machzor, the word for the annual cycle, or wheel of time. Each year that passes and each return to this sacred season offers us the opportunity for reflection. The ritualized chance to make progress as a people is thanks to a conceptual wheel. The wheel is the wheel, the calendar is the calendar, October follows September, Cheshvan, thank God, follows Tishrei, the 16th follows the 15th. The wheel of the calendar turns, but we have the opportunity to reinvent the wheel, or rather, use the wheel to reinvent ourselves with its constant turning. The hopes and dreams and aspirations and changes we seek may be all-encompassing or more narrowly focused, depending on the year we had and our joys and sorrows, successes or challenges. But none of us are so 
stiff-necked or arrogant as to proclaim that there is nothing we could have done better. The calendar is going to be the same. It's still a wheel, but we're going to use it to make progress. We think hard about our actions and our choices, who we want to be and how we want to make a difference. We think about what we want to be different as we return in time next year in our own personal sense and respond process. Reinventing the wheel, writes Roma Agrawal, is what has given human beings an edge. We're trying hard to do the same thing here at the synagogue as well. As Congregational President Michelle Markowitz shared earlier in our service, we continue to move forward with the strategic planning process. Together with our partners at Outside Angle, we look deeper into the congregation and community and listened harder to the needs and wants and hopes that emerged. Ultimately, the decision as to whether riding a bicycle on Yom Kippur is a uniquely Jewish act comes from the community rather than its leadership. And we think we've heard you. Okay, not on that specific question, perhaps. The debate rages on. But you know what I mean. And I think I know what you mean. Through listening sessions, constant ideation and refinement, lots of hard work by Temple's lay leadership, we understand that Temple is doing many things right and that we have a lot more work to do. On the little things, certainly, who doesn't want thicker toilet paper? <laughs> and on the major things that are going to help ensure Temple's relevance and vibrancy for a generation to come. It would be impossible to quantify all of the things that might entail. We're still working on it, and realistically, we will always be working on it as we adapt to the changing societal context in which we live. But let me give you some more concrete examples so that you have something to fight about at tonight's Break the Fast. Let's talk who, how, and what. First, who, or whom, subject, object, verb, preposition. I'm not an English teacher for a reason, people. For whom do we want a relationship with Temple Emmanuel to be important? Reformed Jews living in the South Hills, right? Well, and those of you who live in the city, and those who might self-define as conservative, but who heard that Cantor Calix and Jacob and Rebecca are awesome, <laughs> and those of a younger generation who eschew denominational labels and are just looking for quality content, and those who don't consider themselves Jewish but who are committed to a Jewish partner in a Jewish family. For whom do we want a relationship with Temple Emmanuel to be important? Ooh, in our ECDC community, of course, many of whom have no connection to Judaism but want the excellence that we provide for their children. And the many unaffiliated Jews trying to maintain Jewish lives without the support of Jewish institutions, I'd really rather not write them off either. And people regardless of religious affiliation who are now turning to Temple for volunteer projects and who then develop a positive values-aligned relationship with the Jewish community. It seems like a really important long game against anti-Semitism. And it's a really long list of people for whom we say that having a relationship with Temple is important. But we don't always act that way. Our governance structure ensures that only some of these amazing people have a voice and that only some of us, some of Temple's leadership is able to tap into their amazingness, their talent, their ideas, and their energy. Our financial structure is such that only a fraction of those interacting with Temple seek to do so philanthropically. Our affiliation structure means we prioritize some people on that list more than others in terms of resources and opportunities. We're still working on it. Realistically, we're always going to be working on it, but there has to be a better way. So let's talk about the how. Let's say that you're one of those people in the South Hills community and beyond who says, I see value in what they're doing over at Temple Emmanuel. Time to take a closer look. You call Temple, you come to a program or a service, and wham! We hit you with a membership application. 
join us, we say, and we mean, but I'm not sure if we're going about this the right way. Maybe you or your partner didn't grow up in the Jewish community, and the notion of membership dues is a foreign concept. Maybe you had a really bad experience at another congregation where discussions over your financial contributions felt judgy and off-putting. Maybe you've recently finished high school where the JCC paid you money to participate in learning programs, or college where Hillel paid you money to participate in Jewish programs, or you attended a birthright trip where the Jewish world marshaled its resources to send you for free, and now you are being asked for instead of just handed money. Maybe you've recently canceled your cable contract and are moving to having the panoply of subscription services because you just don't consider yourself a joiner. Maybe there was a time in your life where you were a synagogue super user, when the car knew its own way here, likely during the Torah Center and B'nai Mitzvah process. And now that life circumstances have changed, what you need from your synagogue community has changed. There are myriad reasons that the membership model of synagogue engagement is no longer serving us. We're working on it, and we look forward to sharing more in the coming year, but there has to be a better way to increase both participation-driven vibrancy and financial sustainability. Before we talk about the what, allow me to remind you that it is reinventing the wheel that has given human beings the edge, significantly changing the foundational structures that are no longer serving us while maintaining the best of what we offer the community is where we believe the magic will happen. We thought about the radical change of closing down the synagogue and opening up a bagel shop. <laughs> but that's not actually what we heard from you. It sounded to us in listening sessions and in ideological exploration that people are generally happy with the direction Temple is going. Okay, yes, no one would mind better bagels at every temple event to go along with the thicker toilet paper. We did hear you. And there are indeed many occasions that we need to keep hearing you as we co-create within the reaffirmed relevance of temple's mission and vision statements. This is where you each come in. Ultimately, that decision as to whether riding a bicycle on Yom Kippur is a uniquely Jewish act comes from you and not from me. As a temple, as a staff, we need to put into place the structures and more frequent efforts to sense and respond to your needs. You're telling us, with your feet mainly, but also with your voice and your dollars, what matters to you and we are committed to doing a better job of listening. Sometimes it's going to mean leaning further into areas and partnerships we haven't before. Additional introduction to Judaism offerings and on-ramps, expanded ways to get involved with action and advocacy within the greater community. And sometimes it's going to mean letting go of programs, practices, or even worship opportunities that are no longer meaningful to the vast majority of people who make temple theirs. We're still listening. We're watching even more closely what you choose to do. And we look forward to sharing more in the coming year, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. Because that's kind of how reinventing the wheel works. The wheel itself is awesome. It allowed our ancient ancestors and us to cover more ground more efficiently. And by turning that basic structure on its side, we were able to create pottery and transform grains and power the mechanical world. And with a bit of careful reinvention, that very same wheel that helped us traverse distance can help us create wonders heretofore unimaginable. So too it is with ourselves and our synagogue as we ride the conceptual wheel into the year 5784, as we think about how a bit of reinvention will make ourselves and our experience of the year better, so too do we as a synagogue think about how preserving the best of what we do while examining and reinventing the underlying structures 
will allow us to meet the needs of the Jewish future. Turn it and turn it again, for everything is in it, Jewish tradition teaches. Let's keep reinventing that wheel. Round though that wheel is, reinventing it is what is going to continue to give each of us an edge. Shana Tovah.